Uh, our our fellow uh, teaching session. Uh, this is what it looks like to be a Durham Path fellow at UIMS. Where's the mic? It's right up here. So it's this actually is, really this great is your setup. final your final teaching session mm -hmm. most likely right. Uh, this is this is what a might this be. is what a fellow looks like after a year of training. Okay. Well. So don't don't you know no pressure <laughs> no pressure Nathan. All right, so it's actually, it is actually recording? Okay, good. All right, let's start. Ooh, it's a little bright. Can you touch the brightness down a little touch? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, diagnosis, sir. Well, so it's this, uh, oh, this is, um, oh, this is um, a trichoepithelioma. Uh, good. That's what I'd call it, man. That's beautiful. Very Man. beautiful. Yeah, it's got really nice papillary residual bodies, right? And mm -hmm. I think that's why we cut it. We have lots of trichoaps, but when you see ones with perfect papillary residual bodies like that, it's very, mm -hmm. very helpful finding. I think one of the most helpful things to distinguish yeah. uh, benign follicular tumors from basal cells, the presence yeah. of a thick, uh, dense um, cellular stroma, and particularly when it's condensing to make those papillary residuals. Can you try to... The next case. Get scar. All right. Oh, one of the wow. residents. What's this? One shot diagnosis. Merkel cell. Merkel no. cell. That's what I would call it from that screen right there. I don't think that's what it is. Uh oh. No. Sometimes we're wrong. Well, I'd be worried about But Merkel that's what cell. I would certainly worry about because it looks like very blue, very large nuclei, kind of fine chromatin, and they're kind of pushed together. But, you know, basal, basal would be the other thing you think. Mm -hmm. We stained this one mm -hmm. and ruled out Merkel. So that's a good, that's good though. I'm glad you did because. It's then that's a big. It's an important differential, right? When yeah, you think so of, if you can think you of Merkel, Nathan, on the, on the screen, screen a little bit too. Yeah, yeah especially I'm a little. Right, there you go. Yep. But if you think of Merkel, exclude it because you know missing a Merkel cell is it's almost worse than missing a melanoma because almost fifty percent will potentially metastasize and cause mortality somewhere in that range. Whereas melanoma overall is maybe like twenty percent. So, so is this like a is this a well, is this a weird basal cell carcinoma? Well, is there another piece here? I don't maybe the levels don't actually show that. Or is or does it have pedometrical differentiation or something? Oh, so that's why it looks kind of funny. Oh there can you see it there? Look down a little Oh wow. So did you call it a matrical carcinoma or a basal with pilometrical features? I call it basal with pil with pilometrical differentiation. I like that. That's or really cool. It, it's got abrupt keratinization. And but that helps explain why it looks so yeah. blue. It's very very basal, but it does have clefting. It has pilosating, uh -huh. so it really it looks like a basal really overall. Like Agree. Um, but yeah, so this is the key. This is the key spot. To I find. have seen a case before that was a small fragment that looked blue like a Merkel cell and we tried to stain it and it was like during fellowship and wouldn't stain and then so the, on a re-excision we said well we couldn't exclude Merkel or basal on re-excision it was pilometricoma so it's a great example that out of the context when you just see the blue cells from pilometricoma they can look very scary it really can be concerning so low power this looks like it's some sort of um, with this hyaline here, it looks like it's some sort of um, sweat gland derived tumor, and um, there's definitely a lot of oh yeah, there's def there's some cystic areas. I mean, it looks like a hydradenoma, like fragments of hydradenoma, um, but I. Th Oh yeah, we saw this case. The weird thing about this is that there's all this like random crazy like polymorphism mm -hmm. uh, or polymorphism. And so, and then there are all these like really atypical, and there's some mitoses. So um, we were thinking this could be, a, I, this is either like a malignant hydradenoma, or uh, sorry, hydradenocarcinoma. There you go, so nice ductal differentiation right there. It's a nice little, little focus there. There you go. It's a nice kind of cleft-like sweat duct differentiation. And that's kind of a uniform cell population of pink cytoplasm. So certainly in the hydradeno spectrum it could be. Is this one from the from the finger? Um I What's think the it site? was Do from we have the finger. A, yeah, it was from the finger, but we don't have any really epidermis at all. 
Yeah, when you start seeing a lot of atypia and mitotic activity at the edges, it looks a little infiltrative. Mm -hmm. Certainly that's concerning, right, for malignant. What other thing do you have to be worried about? Oh, this? aggressive digital papillary adenocarcinoma. Mm -hmm. On that location. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, in the finger for sure. It's got ductal differentiation. Usually you'll see papillae with those, but they yeah. can sometimes be solid. Mm -hmm. Just don't forget that it's something to think about. Yeah, it's basically I think it it's looks, a good rule. Even if it looks benign, it, it's mm -hmm. still... If you have a, an adnexal tumor on the fingers, mm -hmm. you should always think of that. At least mm -hmm. that should, if you're not thinking of it, that's that's potentially dangerous, right? You should think, could this be digital papillary adenocarcinoma? Because they can look very bland cytologically. In fact, usually I'd say they kind of lack atypia. They are not always very ugly and they can they can behave badly and metastasize. And it's a badness, so you want to know about those. They're rare, but we see them maybe once or twice a year. In this case. We have a inflammatory infiltrate. Oh yeah, that has some um, um, it's really typical cells with, um, with like interface changes and stuff. Maybe your epidermal involvement looks more like epidermal involvement actually. Oh, that's that one case we're still waiting for. The um, about recording. This. Yeah. And but this is a malignant T cell. Some sort of malignant T cell lymphoma, but we're still we're still trying to classify it. So we still haven't gotten an answers. I believe that is correct. Mm -hmm. So we'll hold that until, mm -hmm. until yeah. we get the final results. Stay tuned, guys, for your, for the next uh, Derm Path teaching session, if it ever happens again. But they are malignant T cells. We know that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Malignant, malignant T cells. cells. Oh, this is a cool case. So there are two things that I think I want to see something like this. And what are those? Well, I think of um, I think of a, a PEN, mm -hmm. uh, palisade encapsulated neuroma, Good. or a lyomyoma. Because uh, sometimes I, I can get these, you know, mistaken and stuff. Sure. Um, I don't think it's a neurofibroma, but if it looks like if it looks like kind of like a schwannoma in the skin, it's probably palisaded encapsulated neuroma. I think that's, that's a great way to think of it. If you I, think I it's a schwannoma it. and it's in the dermis, chances are it's a palisaded encapsulated neuroma or mm -hmm. solitary circumscribed neuroma is the other name for that. And the reason is that they kind of have palisades and they usually tend to be sharply circumscribed with a little capsule around them and they grow out of the nerve. So actually, if you do like an EMA, you'll often find like a layer of EMA positive perineurium around the outside, kind of like you sometimes see in schwannomas. It gets a tumor that grows in the nerve and expands it, and then that kind of capsule around the outside is actually perineurium expanded. So I think though, the most helpful feature to me is the presence of clefts. Yeah. So see those really nice clefts, especially up in the dermis, you can see it on the shave. You can see some there, those little cracks in between the bundles, but go yeah. up to the dermis on the, the, the shave with the epidermis on it. Uh, next piece. Right there. Look at those clefts. You can see even from here these big white spaces that are cracks between each bundle. To me, that's a very like the most characteristic thing of palisaded and encapsulated neuroma, right? And the most common site for these is on the face. Uh, what about this one? Was this on the face or is this a? I'm not sure. It almost looks a little acral, but it could just be rubbed. And I, I've occasionally seen them in other sites. Is but this what's number? Oh, um, is it this one? It's a teaching case that I got from myself. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I have many. Mm -hmm. I have many of those. I've stopped, stopped collecting them. It was just a cool Unless case. Very, so. Well, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. when I was a fellow, I was actively collecting them still. So, the lower oh, power. Gotcha. Right. Hmm. That's nice. Look at that. So what do you think from low power? Some sort of squamous proliferation, okay. with even borders, and some fibrosis, I guess. Uh, a giant cell reaction, like a proliferating pilar tumor. Yeah, or... that'd be my first thought from low power is proliferating pilar tumor, right? You got a kind mm -hmm. of smooth bordered outside, and then in the middle, you've got a transition into kind of dense, um, dense keratin. You could also even wonder a little about something with pilometrical differentiation, because it almost looks like it's making ghost cells there, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, it probably is. So you could kind of wonder if you have something like that that has some, some degree of matrical 
differentiation. I guess there is some, but there are nuclei here. And then they kind of retain nuclei, right? So it's a little, a little different than just a regular pilometric coma. So I think those are both things, but I get that feeling over, like, say, a regular squamous mm -hmm. cell. Also, there's no epidermis, right? Mm -hmm. You look like you're getting a cystic kind of nodule from underneath. Yeah. Uh, history would be useful, but probably here. Mm -hmm. I think it was called proliferating pilometric. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a good, you know, any of these things in the follicular line of differentiation, they can tend to have overlap. I like Rapini's quote that follicular classifying snowflakes is easier than classifying follicular oh, tumors. Yeah. And I think it's kind of true that, that follicular tumors have so much overlap, each one looks a little different, and they can have blended overlapping features sometimes. You focus a little, there you go. At first I thought it was some sort of vasculitis, like vasculitic process. Um, other things, I mean, is this a weird? Yeah, try to try to drive from the screen if you can. Yeah. I know it's less comfortable than that, but it helps ensure that you stay in focus. I find that helpful yeah. when I'm doing a video thing. I just. It's not as comfortable as driving yeah. with binoculars, but it helps maintain focus better. Well, so we have a shave scan, of course. Um, that's what you do when you don't know what to say. To say where you are. Um, so it looks like there's like, it looks like there's some sort of vasculitic process going on, like a th it's like a thrombotic vasculopathy. Um, I don't think there's a hemangioma. Oh my gosh! Okay, so you have all this, all this, all these extravasated red blood cells. You have hemosiderin. Um, oh man, I have to think about Kaposi's sarcoma, like Kaposi sarcoma. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a good thing to think about. But you're right with all the dilated vessels. It's yeah. it's reasonable for for you know. Um, coagulopathy or um, mm -hmm. vasculopathy is to kind of cross your mind. You know, it's a shave biopsy, so it mm -hmm. makes you wonder if this is an individual papule or something. Yeah. And the bleeding looks real because there is hemocytin around there, yeah. so that's helpful. Stasis change, too, right, would be yeah, another thought be. that you can consider. That stasis can sometimes have an appearance like this. So, see that stuff there? That's weird. Yeah. yeah, what would you vote on if you had to vote? I'd vote on Kaposi. Yeah, I think this looks like Kaposi sarcoma, but certainly it would be one mm -hmm. that I would consider the possibility mm -hmm. yeah, of fine. stasis or something mm -hmm. else. And so, so at low HHV, power, I was thinking like it, it looked like a acellular PPD. <laughs> right, sure, because it's got it's got kind yeah. of, and in this case, it's kind of got reactive vessels and mm -hmm. uh, or like a reactive appearance of, of vessels uh, somewhere, mm -hmm. so that you can have that with real bad stasis, acroangiotype. Uh, ac I'm sorry. Acroangiodermatitis. Yes. Um, neat. All right. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in. It was. It was Kaposi. Yeah, this was Kaposi. It was HHVA positive.